Welcome back to the Go Tanium Show. Hey, I'd like to thank everybody for your positive feedback. We dropped that four episode pilot and the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. You've asked for more episodes like that. And so that's what we're continuing to do. It's two days before Christmas as we're recording this episode. And the title today is Patching Your Ugly Sweater little tribute to the Griswolds today for Christmas. So uh, you'll see this probably drop the first part of the year, but we're recording this right at Christmas, hence a little bit of the Christmas theme. Patching your ugly sweater. Yes, this is going to be a patch episode. And today with me on the call is none other than the PM for patch, Greg Thomas. Greg, say hi to everybody. Hey, Ashley, thanks for having me. Uh, everybody, thanks for listening. Uh, my name is Greg Thomas. I am the patch and deploy PM here at Tanium. And uh, looking forward to talking to you all a little bit about uh, Linux patching today. Yeah, so you guys have been up to a lot in the year 2020 in patch. I've seen a lot of little new features working their way in. Tell us a little bit about what you've done this year. Yeah, it's, it's been a really busy year. Uh, we started the year at year out uh, on the Windows side, adding Tanium Scan for Windows, um, you know, improving the efficiency with which you can distribute those patching payloads. Uh, we added direct downloads when uh, COVID hit. We added Oracle and Amazon Linux patching. We added uh, a feature to allow you to see all of your endpoints, online or offline, uh, enhanced RBAC. Uh, for all those customers out there that have heavily distributed shops. Uh, we've enhanced the, the, uh, the way we distribute files, uh, making that a lot more efficient to your endpoints and uh, giving you a lot less pieces to, um, to look at when you need to figure out what's going on. Tell me a little bit more about the RBAC side of things. I've got some customers that'd be interested in that. Yeah, RBAC was huge. Uh, I, I will say uh, it is a very challenging task to take on. Uh, we have a lot of customers that, uh, that have those heavily distributed staffs. You know, ideally, we have a single patch team that patches everything, but the reality of uh, the world we live in and the enterprises we service is they're huge and they have heavily distributed teams. So we made a really granular RBAC model uh, that you can, you can essentially use it as far as your organization wants you to. Uh, and what I mean by that, the simpler you keep it, the simpler, simpler your life is going to be. But if you need those extra functionalities, those extra roles and those extra um, uh, capabilities, they are absolutely there for you. And uh, we've seen some customers be very successful. Fantastic. So a lot of this is really culminated from customer feedback from viewers like you and your input to the product. And uh, you've got a story about that. Greg, how this Linux thing coming in patch 3.2 that people will be seeing very soon was really about customer feedback. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think if you've talked to any of the, the, the TAMs or sales folks or PMs at Tanium, uh, you would realize that a lot of our great ideas come from customers, right? We, we give you the tool, we give you the platform that gives you the ability to, to do these things. And then you come back with us to us with great ideas and, uh, you know, as we can, we implement them. Uh, in this particular case with Linux, we added uh, Red Hat 8, Oracle 8, CentOS 8, and SUSE 11 through 15 support. Uh, this was a direct request from a customer. Customer says, hey, we need this. We're moving a lot of systems to CentOS 8. We're moving a lot of systems to RHEL 8. We've got a, an entire fleet of SUSE systems. So we, uh, we built the support for it. Um, and that's coming oh, out very soon. And so you say 11, that's going pretty far back, isn't it? Yeah, we, we uh, supported back to what the Tanium platform supports. So the interesting thing there is why we, while we do announce support for those uh, operating systems that I just rattled off there, uh, technically any Linux distribution that uh, is based on RPM and can run a Tanium client should also work in this. So those folks out there running Fedora or Cloud Linux, uh, mm -hmm. things like that should also work. Wow. So Linux patch. Okay. So I, first off, I have to admit, I'm a Windows guy and I know an, enough Linux to be dangerous, you know, RM F, whatever. <laughs> I could really mess some stuff up in Linux. Sure. And when I think, when I hear Linux and patching and that whole open source thing, it just makes my head spin. And that feels like a real ugly sweater to me. What are some of the nuances you guys have had to really work with and trying to, you know, Windows patching, you, you know, it's going to be the same OS 
down to the letter pretty much, but Linux, that's, boy, what, what are some of the challenges you've had to face there? Yeah, uh, it's definitely a totally different world. Uh, customers have different repositories they want to patch against. They have different uh, different distributions, lots of different uh, applications installed, as you would on the Windows side as well. But one of the really unique things about Linux patching is that uh, you've got potentially hundreds of dependencies for these for these package files that are going down to endpoints. So if I want to distribute a package from December 2020, uh, I'm not just installing that package. I may be installing a whole uh, load of other patches as well that are dependencies for that patch. So in the Windows world, we've got these cumulative patches, they're large in size, and we know that if we install those, they bring the system all the way up to date. Well, the Linux Linux took kind of the, the, uh, the opposite approach and they have lots and lots and lots of very tiny patches. So uh, handling those dependencies uh, historically has been the biggest, one of the biggest challenges uh, from a Linux perspective. So, in patch 3.2, we have changed the way we patch Linux. It sounds like we've done some consolidation there and maybe even simplified the user experience, which is what we're all about. So why don't you go ahead and dive into this release specifically and tell us what was is coming soon? Yeah, absolutely. So when we first developed Linux patch a few years ago, um, you know, in hindsight, I think we took the, the wrong approach. Uh, we focused very heavily on Yum, uh, a package manager, and said, hey, uh, anything that runs Yum, we'll, we'll start supporting that. And, and then we, we segmented it even further and we said, let's focus on operating systems. So we focused on Red Hat and we focused on CentOS. And like I said earlier this year, we added Amazon and Oracle Linux. Um, what that meant is that if I wanted to deploy security patches to all four of my, my Linux distributions that, that we previously supported, I would have to create four different configuration items. That's not ideal. The more things that people have to touch, the more opportunity for mistakes and the more uh, load on the administrators just to manage those things. Uh, what we did this time around was, was really take a look back at that approach. We took feedback from customers absolutely on this one and they said, Linux as a platform. Don't focus on the distribution, focus on Linux as a platform. So that's what we did. Uh, if you want to deploy all your security patches to all your Linux systems, including the new ones that I, uh, that I mentioned earlier, you create one configuration. You say, send out all the security patches uh, instead of creating four or eight or 10. Um, it significantly simplifies what folks are doing. They're moving from, we have a customer moving from uh, 200 different configurations that they had previously. Uh, wow. down to about 25. And they could probably wow. reduce that even further if they wanted to. All right, why don't you pop into the interface and show us a little bit of patch 3.2. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, one of the things you'll notice here, if you haven't uh, upgraded patch in, in about two months is an entire new user interface. Uh, the new user interface is very much focused on giving you actionable data. Um, is my, are my endpoints healthy? Uh, I can look down further. I can see what are the top patches that are missing in my environment. Immediately, I look at this and I realize, hey, you know what? This is that pretty bad Windows SHA-2 hash uh, patch from 2019, maybe. Uh, anyways, lots of usable information. This is all clickable. You can drill down on it. But what I really want to focus on here is the, uh, is the Linux part of it. So previously, I would have had a section here for Red Hat. I would have had another section for Amazon, another for Oracle, another for CentOS. Uh, if we had continued that and we tried to support all these new operating systems, this would have been pages long. Um, there's a, uh, there's a, a community article where we discuss this. We're gonna be adding another community article, uh, a little bit more technical where we're gonna show, show some screenshots of before and after. But this is what it should look like now. You need one configuration for Windows. You need one, potentially two for Linux. Um, these operate as a, a priority. If there's, uh, if the first configuration here can do something successfully on that particular operating system, it does. And if not, it fails back to this other one. This is kind of a fallback for everything we have here. So in this, even in this small lab, I was able to condense about 14 configurations down to, uh, down to just two here on the Linux side. Wow. That's um, impressive. Yep. Uh, especially on maintenance windows, right? Time, Believe it or not, works the same in Amazon, in Oracle, in Red Hat. Uh, time is the same. So when you create a maintenance window, it's going to work the same across all those operating systems. We've, we, we, we don't need to create uh, 
eight different maintenance windows for you know 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. So I heard there's a little bit of a hiccup. Maybe the once you go up to 3.2, there's something you need to migrate. Maybe. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't call it a hiccup. It's uh, it's by design. Uh, okay. The new the new model here. Um, of focusing on Linux instead of all those different operating systems uh, could be a little jarring for folks that just click the upgrade button without reading the release notes and knowing that this is going to happen. All of a sudden, their configurations get condensed. Uh, Wait, quick timeout, quick timeout. You said reading the release notes. All right, everybody. <laughs> KB.tanium.com. I have to get that commercial in here. KB.tanium.com. Go read the release notes every time before you click the upgrade button, please continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great point, Ashley. I uh, appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, the reality is there, there's a lot of folks that aren't gonna read those. They're not gonna read them in detail. So what we did, we, we created a migration. Uh, when you, if you want to enable this new Linux patch capability, you just come up here to the settings and you go to the operating systems tab. In this environment, you can see that it's already been enabled. We want to make it clear this is focused on RPM based distributions. When you click this button, you're going to get a screen that pops up that just gives you a few paragraphs to read. It explains what we're actually changing here. That is the primary reason for the migration. We want to make sure you just get that small screen to read so you know this change is happening and we don't just pull the rug out from under you. Uh, the actual migration takes a matter of seconds. You click the save button and off you go. It's very, very simple and it will take all those operating systems and condense them down to just the Linux platform. Okay, cool. Now you mentioned RPM Linux, and I know one question that's on a lot of people's minds, and you know this question is coming. So what else, uh, you know, Debian, Ubuntu, when are we gonna see something in that neighborhood? Don't shoot the messenger, but uh, do your best with that one. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's another area we get tons and tons of requests from customers. Uh, part of what we did in this new 3.2 release is, as I mentioned, we, we kind of overhauled our approach. We are not as heavily focused on the operating system, the package manager. But what we also did was we simplified the, the onboarding of new package managers. Uh, as, as you mentioned, Ubuntu and Debian, those are pretty high on our list, uh, as is um, Mac, to be honest with you. Um, We've simplified our ability to onboard those. I expect we'll see uh, we'll see those here in 2021. No, oh, that's good news. Yeah. So there's a lot for Linux in this release. Uh, what about non uh, Linux or other Windows folks? What are there other improvements, fixes, things in 3.2 that they're going to benefit from as well? Yeah. So um, I, I will really focus back on some of the changes we've made over the past couple of months. Uh, we've, we've added a new functionality called endpoint configuration and Tanium data services. Now you don't necessarily have to know what those things are. You just have to understand that Tanium data services gives you the ability that when you log into the patch workbench, these 19 systems that you see are missing this particular Silverlight patch. Those are systems that you specifically have access to. Uh, prior, to uh, prior to having this capability, we showed the counts for the entire enterprise. Now you couldn't drill down, you couldn't do anything on them. You couldn't get uh, any other information on those endpoints that you didn't have permission to, but all the counts you saw were for the entire enterprise. So if you've got that heavily distributed customer um, and they've got management rights over say a thousand systems and there's a hundred thousand in the enterprise, seeing that there's 50,000 systems missing a patch doesn't help them much. So now it's actionable information. They can go in here, they can see these are 19 systems I have rights to. I can click on this right here and I can begin uh, installing those patches. So that's some of the RBAC kind of coming into play where it's filtering the views. And as the TDS, the Tanium data service means that you're getting offline and online data and it's filtered to what you have permissions to work on. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely. Fantastic. That's really fantastic. Yeah, actually one other real neat thing we, we just added, um, our threat response product had this and we saw it and we said, man, we gotta have that. Uh, this little pull out uh, uh, menu here is really, really nice. Oh, wow. You can very quickly on any patch without leaving the page, you can come in here and you can get information about all your systems. You can get information about the patch. You can see which patch list Wee. or block list it's included in. Uh, just trying to make things easier for customers without having to, uh, and, and trying to reduce the number of clicks you need. 
wow, you snuck that in there. That's fantastic, man. I like it. I know my customers are going to love that too. Well, we're just about out of time here. And I've talked to PMs over the years a number of times. And the one question they can never answer is when do we get it? And I know that's a trick question and you can plead, uh, you know, complete the fifth, whatever, but it's basically like coming soon. Uh, but uh, what, when, when should customers expect this uh, approximately? You come in with all the hard questions. Yeah. Uh, if you asked me two weeks ago, I would have said this week. Um, the holidays have been a challenge, you know, folks taking PTO and whatnot. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get this out by the middle of January, by, by January 15th. We've got some customers expecting to use this in their uh, production environments. Uh, we've actually got customers running this uh, as, as a limit availability release already and giving us great feedback. Uh, just another example where um, our customers really drive what we do. Uh, and and they're incredibly helpful for us as we develop products. So That's thank fair. you all. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead and stop sharing your screen. I've got uh, something here I want to share with folks Absolutely. as well. So as we wrap up this episode, I'm going to put my slide back up here, which has a bit.ly short URL to bit.ly slash tpatch32, Tanium Patch 3.2. If you follow that link, it's going to take you to one of Greg's community posts. And the community is where we can also get your feedback on this. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like, what was working for you, what we still need to fix. We would love to hear back from you. And thank you again for making the GoTanium show an early success. So we're going to continue to bring you cutting edge, relevant release content like this. And also over in the other parts of the community, there's some places where you can interact with us on the show specifically. You can also go to bit.ly slash go dash tanium dash show, which will take you to the go tanium page within the tanium community. So thanks again, Greg, for being our guests on the show today and go check mm -hmm. out this post from Greg for more information on what's coming your way in Tanium Patch 3.2. And for even more information, go to kb.tanium.com. We'll see you next time on the next episode of the Go Tanium Show. <laughs>